Welcome back to sunny Spain. Today I'm at Jerez, or Jerez, <laughs> if you're English, and we're going to be riding and testing the new range of Michelin tyres, the 2024. This event's going to be split into three tests on the road, on the adventure bikes behind me, testing the Anarchies. Stunning! On the road also, on the, the road bikes over there, testing the Power 6s and the GP2. Finally, this afternoon, we're going to be testing the GP6, GP2s and Power 6s on circuit at Jerez. Oh, it's a proper, proper circuit, Jerez. So I'm really quite excited about that. We've got four sessions. We've got RSV4s, we've got S1000RRs, we've got Super Jukes, we've got R1s, we've got Fireblades, a whole host of different bikes to test. So uh, this is going to be a fantastic video and uh, my first ever tyre test. I'm really, really quite excited. So, uh, Chopsy, grab yourself a coffee and uh, roll the intro. done the road ride, we've done the adventure ride, now it is time for the main event, now it is time for the track ride. There you go, he's here look, the first person to say I look like the Michelin man in my leathers will be bad for the channel. <laughs> I'll get the moment on camera when Evesy fails the alcohol test. <laughs> Zero. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> he passed. I passed the alcohol test. No alcohol left in the body. Didn't have too much last night because they were threatening alcohol tests this morning. Never had to do one of those before. But thankfully, we've passed. So everyone is now having lunch. I've had a light lunch because I knew I'd have to get into my leathers. It's now time to uh, sample these bad girls on track. So uh, we've got a couple of S1000RRs. We've got an RS660. There was an RSV4 here yesterday, but I think it got crashed. Uh, we've got Super Duke 1390 and 1290. That could be quite interesting. We've got an R1. Could be last chance to ride the R1 on track. We've got a couple of Hyper Motards and a CBR 1000RR 2023 Fireblade. What would be your choice? We've got four sessions. What are you taking on track? Let me know in the comments. We've also got this lurking over here, 2023 Fireblade. I forgot about that one. And we've got this man lurking in the corner as well, Mr. Nevesy. So that's it, kitted up. Um, the first is, there's 11 of us. So there's a group of six and a group of five and we're going out second. So I think, I think we're gonna be in the group of five people. So there's five of us on track at Hareth. And we've got five people, we've got the track to ourselves. This is unbelievable, isn't it? This is a money can't buy experience. So, uh, Really, really excited about this. So the idea is a bit like what we did on the road ride. So we start off on the GP6s, which is what I've got on this double R, which I'm going to be taking out first. And then uh, we do that for two sessions and then we go on to one of the double R's or another bike with the GP2s on. So that's the plan. It's been ages since I've run a seven double R's a year ago, I think, I last rode one of these. You excited it? You turned the wheelie control off, have you? Going for a bit of fun. I do love an S1000 double R. They've got R1s here, they've got fire blades. But the S1000 double R, for a bigger guy, you know, it's, it's so roomy. I've never been around it before. I've done, did a little bit, I watched an onboard with Scott Redding. I also watched old Chris Van von Grumble's track guide. But I'm not looking to go because, you know, I just want to know which way the, the bends go more than anything else. Nevesy and Johnny Mack have said, oh, it's such a good track, one of the best tracks in the world. So expectations are, are pretty high. They really don't know what. 
had a really interesting chat with Neves. He said, do you want to know what gears you've got to be in on the double R around here? And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Not that I can remember. But he said, keep it revving, you know? Obviously, much, much more so than what I am now. I'm just... If the bike's revving, then the inertia effect, you know, the gyroscopic effect of the engine <coughs> keeps the bike a bit more stable. Is what he was saying. If you know, if, if you're if you're too low a gear, the bike will flop around, and if you get something wrong, then you've got you know it'll really wind on with the power. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate. So I want to learn where I'm going. Third gear. I think you only get out any higher than third on the on the far on the main straights. That's it. Most of these corners are all second gearers, including the one that just gone round in himself. It looks a bit different than what it does when you watch it on onboards. So Michael said second gear for all of these. Leave it in second. Just flick it up into third before you go around this one. Peel it around here in third. That does fine up a bit. Second. Well, that could have been a third gear. I can't believe this is a Moto GP track. They must feel like a go kart track to those bikes. That was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that immensely. Super, super cool track. Super, oh, it's just brilliant. Just fantastic. So, for the next session, Rather than go out on the same bike, because we've got to take two bikes out with the Power 6s, so I'm going to take this out. It's either the Hyper Motard, which I'm sure will be all right, but I think you're going to, you're going to struggle a little bit, so <laughs> I'm going to take the uh, 1390 Super Duke out again. Just to... And then, cause that's, yeah, yeah, I'm just taking it out again because I love it, all right? No more excuses, I just love it. Equipped with Power 6. Me and Kate are on the Super Dukes. Super Duke friends! <laughs> I'm laughing and I've not even left the pit lane yet. I wonder what wheelie mode this is on. Is it in... There's, there's low, medium, high and very high wheelie on this. is uh, Jib and I, the next Moto GP racer. I don't know what it's called, Jib and I, Jib and New. I wasn't following Moto GP back when this guy was, was racing. And Rossi's bike moving all over the place, he carried too much speed in there, he's run wide, Jib and has moved back down the inside, Rossi made a mistake. Jimenez has absolutely pounced on that. I think we'll leave it in third on this one, Michael. It's just everything is so easy. I want to make it. This is incredible. I can't wait to try the GP2s on one of these. I thought the uh, 
a south of double R was good. For me, being a bigger car, this is so much easier. Agile, they feel so agile. I mean, these were the same tyres we had at El Maria, and it's amazing. Like, this track is so different to El Maria, they just seem to work better on this. careful there. That was a definite step out. I love the fact you give me a bit of gas and the front lifts. Absolutely awesome. I'm a little bit that back stepping out, I have to admit, it scared me a little bit. I scared me a little bit. I think I could be reaching my confidence level on this bike, on these tyres. I'm ready for the GP2s. So we've tried the S1000RR on the Power 6s. In the next two sessions, we're going to try the GP2. So this is the S1000RR with the GP2s on. That is what we are riding next. What a lucky boy. And then we've also got the, uh, the KTM, but this is the, the R. I don't think, this isn't the Evo, this is the R. But it's got the uh, also GP2s on. So after my little step out with the Power 6s, I'm going to see if it gives me a bit more confidence on the GP2s, because I felt like I was pushing the Power 6s as far as I dare. So uh, let's try the GP2s. So we want to see if these GP2s give you a little bit more grip, a little bit more confidence on the track. I mean, the Power Sixes were great until they had that little, little, little step out on the Super Duke. So this, this, this they're like, oh yeah, no, you won't get that on these. You know, these are these are a bit more geared up. So it's interesting. I've had a moment, shall we say? I think I'm a naked man now. I think I'm a no, it's nice when you do get in a, a corner like that though on a fourth fight. See if we can tell the difference between the tyres. Oh, it's, it's, it's easy to hold a line I think. These tyres are really good. They get a lot more confidence. You just feel more confident on them. They're just giving you more. I don't know, it's just... It's, it's, it's very hard to explain. I know they're better in my mind. So that also helps. Got it though, it just feels more supportive. It feels like the dust like a little bit less flex in it. 
a bit less legs in the, the carcass maybe to give you a little bit, a bit more support on the braking. We've got Jake here. So we have with us Eduardo from Michelin. He's the marketing manager for the Power 6s and the GP2s. I'll just hand you the microphone. Thank you. Hello, everyone. What's the biggest challenge for, for the actual technical teams when you said, we, we want better grip, we want this, we want that? You know, what's, what, yeah. what, what's the thing which takes the longest for them to actually sort? In fact, what is really difficult is when you ask to, to, to the technical people to, to, to work on a different level, you know, where, uh, you know, Handling, wet, dry grip, and the rest. So it's to find a compromise between all the all the needs and the customer expectation. So today we are clearly focused on the dry and wet grip, and also it was difficult to have also best handling because we have to to have both. So, so I guess all of that R and D work that, that's what Michelin. I guess that's what Mitre GP feeds into a lot of the road tires, obviously, from from all the work you're doing in R and D, all the money you're investing, the people, the time. So, I mean, because it seems to me like tyre technology over the last 10 years has just, you know, it's gone crazy. Is that due to sort of MotoGP and those sorts of things which, you know, Michelin's involved with? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Today, clearly, MotoGP for us, it's an a innovator accelerator, you know, innovation accelerator. And also it's a laboratory, laboratory, laboratory sorry, for my English, okay? So, that, uh, so it's really important for us. 
Of course, when we develop a MotoGP tire, it's really oriented for the competition and also the cost of the tires for MotoGP, yeah. it's very huge. But we can have a bridge between what we developed and what we have in MotoGP, for example, and after on the road. And as Piero Taramasso expressed to you this morning, yeah. we have some compound and some mix or some uh, technologies that we can link with, uh, with the tires for the road. It's the case, for example, with Michelin Pro GP2. We, we, we have some black compound on the shoulders that is clearly link what we have developed for MotoGP. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers. So, the last session of an absolutely fantastic day. So I'm going back out again on the Super Duke. This is a non-Evo, this one. 1390 non-Evo. But it, sh it should be fine just to see. I mean, there's such a dramatic difference <laughs> on the double R with the GP2 tyre that I'm expecting, you know, this to be pretty similar because I say it put me off a little bit when it stepped out on the power six why don't these bikes come with the gp2s and the, they come with the power sixes standard I guess it's they've got a lot of power I guess the gp2 would get pretty chewed up yeah on that one pretty chewed up on the road so I guess that's why they come with the power sixes but if you're going to use it on track regularly gp2s so I've had a play with this already I've put the wheelie control on extra high very high wheelie control oh, the fuel reserve isn't on it's just been filled up that will hopefully catch up uh, track mode very high wheelie control road ABS that'll do so GP2's on the 1390 and Kate's in front there on the uh, on the 1290 <laughs> Uh, there's a definite more confidence with, with these tyres. Oh, step behind. Kate, who does not hang around. Absolutely transform. Stop in the middle of the track, have a chat. Oh, this is incredible. Absolutely. Brakes are so nice on this bike. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What a bloody thing this is. God. That's 
stable on these tyres. Show me the right lines. Pay down. Super impressive. That front end under braking, you can trail brake in really late on it. Gives you absolutely loads of loads of feel on the brakes, much more than the power six. Much more than the power six. This for me, I think, is the king of the super naked. And the brake in there, the trail braking into that corner. impressed with the GP2 rubber. Thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the 1590 Super Duke. Now I just need both in my life. Brilliant. Hurrah. Until next time.